Um, thank you very much for, for joining us here on uh, GB News. I, I suppose my first question is that you've been um, on the front line in uh, this, this terrible war. J just give us a sense of what it's like on that front line. You know, this is the most full-scale war waged by Russia since the Second World War. The aggression of Putin's Russia is similar to Hitler's Germany, not only due to the scale of military operations, but also the war crimes they commit on the territory of Ukraine. And what, what has it been like fighting? What is the morale like among Ukrainian troops? The heart of this war is in the east of Ukraine at the moment. The fiercest fighting is in the Donbass and the south of Ukraine now, in the areas of Kherson, Mykolaiv and Zaporizhia. When we defeat Putin at Donbass and in the south, as we did in Kiev, then we will break the backbone of Putin's army and win. Of course, the fighting is very heavy, and the Russian army is higher in number, and they have more equipment and aircraft, tanks, than we do. But the Ukrainian military forces are stronger than Russia's, because we know what we are fighting for. We have more courage, more spirit, more faith, and most importantly, we know the Lord is with us, so victory will be ours. Can I ask, um, what, what has your role uh, been? Ha have you been involved in, in fighting? And what, what do you think of uh, the, uh, the Ukrainian response in terms of the, of the leadership of, of President Zelensky? You know, when the war started, our political party was in opposition to President Zelensky. That's why we didn't receive an invitation to the Army General Staff and the Cabinet of Ministers. But from the first day I took up a machine gun and I went to the front, I joined the armed forces of Ukraine. We fought near Kiev, we beat the enemy, and now we are still fighting in the south and east, still beating the enemy. As for our political differences and political struggle, we have postponed this issue until victory, until the end of the war. All our political battles must be forgotten and put on hold. We need unity in Ukraine to win. We will turn our attention back to political issues after we defeat the Russian invaders. Can I ask about the response from, from, from the West, uh, particularly the UK? Do you feel that it is going uh, far enough? You know, we are very grateful to our partners. In the first place, to the UK, the USA and the European countries for the support we receive. It's extremely important for us and it allows us to continue the fight. Unfortunately, I remember how it was in 2014 when the war began. Let me remind you that Ukraine has been opposing Russia for nine years now. In 2014, I led the country when the war began and, unfortunately, our strategic partners, including the United Kingdom, the United States and the European Union, refused to help us. If this help had been given, the war could have been ended in 2014. In 2014, we did not have a professional army. We had a ruined economy. We had practically no effective weapons at all, and we desperately needed help. Back then, European countries and the United Kingdom made the mistake of staying. They did not want to irritate Putin and would not provide military aid to Ukraine. That's when we should have stopped the aggression and won. I hope it's not too late now. By joining forces with our strategic partners, we will be able to achieve an important victory, not only for Ukraine, but also for the entire civilised world. And, and just three, three final quick questions, if I can. First of all, uh, Boris Johnson has been talking to the Ukrainian parliament today, uh, saying that this is Ukraine's finest hour. Is, is that important, the, 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 the solidarity from the UK and particularly from from our Prime Minister. When the aid is systematic and large scale, we will have enough strength to stand up to Russia and win. We respect Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, for his courage and his systematic support for Ukraine. What do you think Vladimir Putin was trying to achieve? Did he think that Ukraine would uh, collapse, would fall very quickly? And, and do you think that he wanted to put in the former president, Yanukovych, as his puppet president in Kyiv. Do you think that was Vladimir Putin's plan? So, he wanted to do what we didn't let him do in 2014. He wanted to attack Ukraine very quickly, break the resistance, and put a puppet government at the head of a completely controlled, broken and destroyed country, or any other puppet person who would satisfy Russia. And just very finally, what does victory look like in Ukraine? Is it the end of fighting or is it 
winning back the Donbass region and even Crimea. What, what is victory for you? What is victory for Ukraine? Of course, we have to solve several problems. The first task is to destroy the Russian army's ability to continue its aggressive offensive operations. The main priority is to destroy Russia's aggression, and this is important not only for Ukraine, but for the whole of Europe. The second priority is, of course, the complete liberation of all our territories from occupation. OK, thank you very, very much uh, for your time uh, this afternoon. Uh, stay safe uh, and take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.